practiced architecture. I still All do right. it, but not so much uh, for, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I don't know. I'm not okay. good with numbers, <laughs> yeah. if you ask me when. So, and, uh, so when they actually did the switch, dare I use the term, the switch from architecture to photography come about? Well, I'm, I'm still not sure that I switched. I mean, I do photography a lot now, but I haven't um, left architecture. Uh, it's For me, it's just I'm trying to see how I can do both because I like mm -hmm. both. Um, I can say that I like more architecture or photography. Um, the moment that I started uh, doing more photography was the moment that I had a, lot, a little bit more time to spend on this. Um, it was some years ago when here started, uh, because we have a, quite a recession now in Greece, and yeah. things in architecture generally in whatever has to do with art uh, have fallen a lot. So um, I, I, was, I was working on big projects, I was, ha I was having... Um, um, anyway, I, I, I worked at very large buildings, very large structures here, so this part was shrinking and at some point there were just some not so interesting things to do so i said i said well this is a moment that i can take a break and uh, do some photography or see what i can do maybe i can combine both and um somehow i i'm always uh, shooting architecture from when i whenever I, uh, when i know myself but somehow i blended this together and um, yeah. and another thing that uh, made me be more uh, involved i mean involved publicly because i was all always um, having my my things uh was the moment that google plus started to um flourish because mm. it was this fantastic um communication and this community that came in contact, people came in contact, um, there were ideas that were um, exchanged. It was very interesting and exciting. It was, yeah. I mean, for me, this was, I was comparing it with um, the beginning of the century, the 20s, when it was this effervescence in, in the art world and people were, uh, how it was, for instance, in Paris, the, all the artists were going there and uh, it was this exchange, fantastic exchange uh, of ideas and, uh, yeah. I've uh, met a lot of people that I didn't know. Um, I found uh, photographers that uh, really great photographers, like Joe, for instance, uh, since you mentioned him, and uh, a lot more. And uh, this gave me a reason to be in the public, to be um, to show my work, because I didn't see a reason for showing my work since it was just a hobby for me. Yeah, I, I didn't. I hadn't it wasn't something um, conscious but it was just photography is here and my life is something else it's uh, yeah I hadn't combined this two then it's interesting interesting you say yeah. that actually because it's uh, for me I, I was very fortunate I think uh, right at the beginning got involved with Google plus and uh, it is amazing how many people you you meet yeah. Just take take my my little old show here you know 72 episodes and the amount of people that i've spoken to and connected with now is is truly amazing let me just talk uh, briefly about your your photography and your photography style um this this very high contrast and and really working with what i would term as pure black and pure white how did that idea come about? Did you see it from somewhere else or was it, and you thought that's a nice idea, I'm gonna work on that, or was it something which you, you developed yourself? I, yeah. Actually, it's not exactly pure black. <laughs> no, no. <it's>, this is, <laughs> no, because this is a thing that I always tell my students, don't go to pure black because it's it doesn't have any detail and you don't tell any story with pure black or pure white, just yeah. as a parenthesis. Um, Actually, it was um, a trend. It's um, not necessarily that the contrast is all, all uh, also coming from the way I am because I'm um, I'm a bit contrasty as as a person. I, I like to go to uh, go to the limit um, generally. So contrast is something that is um, uh, matches my personality, and this is why I use it. Um, and also, it was also an exploration. 
taking something to the limit. Um, for instance, I have a, a series of uh, photos, uh, it's called Ode to Black, where I wanted to try to go as far as I can with um, darkness in photography, till the moment that you can't remove any, any more light, that photography is not possible anymore. So this yeah. was a, a very interesting uh, experiment that I did. And uh, it came out as something that I really like. I'm very fond of, uh, of this series. And um, so um, it was also a trend. It was uh, because I was in contact with Joel also, who is he's working uh, with um, pretty much the same um, style of work. And um, so it was inspiration. It was something that um, um, suited my style because otherwise I could have done something else. There are many trends and it's not uh, just one. Um, but this this was something that I uh, I felt it's it's me and I'm still working with um, I mean it was it wasn't only a series but I like to work with uh, intense contrast and uh, uh, dark tones and uh, yeah things like it's, this. it's so interesting are, actually, in fact when you look at your website they got a number of what I would term as projects that you've built up here and we're going to go to screen share shortly to have a look at a couple of the mm -hmm. um, uh, projects one in particular which caught my eye which is the motion blur uh, selection oh. of images which is totally away from from architecture if you can hear any bangs by the way going off it's guy fawkes night yeah. in the uk today it's the 5th of november oh. and the kids are yeah, out with all their fireworks so uh, <laughs> if yeah. um, it, there's nothing going on untoward outside <laughs> it's no just burglar in your house <laughs> shooting no, around <laughs> no the house is still there when i left but um yeah that that one is totally different from uh, and it, it's uh it's close to me in actual fact because i started a project which i called uh, one uh, life at one fifteenth of a yeah. second where i've actually I'm taken fascinated photographs. by emotion blur it's, I was it always is amazing what, what you see in that well i'm really looking forward to hearing your comments on that particular group but again talking okay. about your work here and the, the the subject matter i can see that you've you're, you've created projects as you've gone along and you're obviously experimenting as you go along where the the photoshop side of your work which is obviously very important to the creation of of your fine art yeah. where did where did that uh, come about and and did you just learn that as you're going along or did you did you uh, you know take some courses on it um not necessarily i learned things about it and i built things i mean learning from here and there um getting ideas um combining it with what I've known and um, you just create something as you go. It's, it's like this. I mean, it's, it was in, in the beginning, I had some, um, some help from Joel with some things. Then uh, this started to, I started to work on, on this um, uh, direction. Um, and then I realized that I can combine uh, my processing with things that I knew before that uh, I've learned before, especially about looking, uh, working with uh, how to work with light, with sh light and shadow, because I was drawing. Uh, being an architect, most architects are at least in some degree uh, draw, um, but I was doing classical drawing, um, so I know about how light works and generally how you can control this in in drawing in art. Uh, I was always interested about this, uh, so I was uh, searching. And I understood that you can do the same thing in processing, because especially in this, I'm not just capturing a photo and uh, working with sliders to, to work on a general general adjustments and, and things like this. I um, actually go and recreate everything in, in the photo according to what I have in mind. So for me, it's just a starting point what I, uh, what I shoot. Um, the capture that I get. It's like I had a piece of paper in front of me and I have to create something. It's like drawing. This is what mm. I... So this made... Uh, add a lot, added a lot of things to how I, I see uh, photography and also to how I process it. And um, at this moment, this is... Um, I'm, I, I, when I work on my images, it's just like I, I think that I'm uh, like drawing because especially I'm, I'm working with a Wacom tablet, yeah. so I'm working with. But in the in the beginning, I wasn't. I mean, I'm working with the Wacom tablet for less than a year. 
I was doing all these things with the mouse be before. Mm -hmm. um, but working with a Wacom tablet is giving me even more the sensation that I'm, uh, that I'm drawing. Yeah. It's something which I've never actually used, actually, a tablet, but um, whenever I've spoken to uh, other photographers, they, they say that it, it does take a time getting used to it, but uh, there's so much more um, finite control. Yeah, it, uh, it's not so difficult to get used to it. It, right. it takes a little bit because it's not exactly as a mouse. It's, it works with it in a different way, um, but it's useful. Not that you can do. I think you can do anything with a mouse. It's just easier to... It saves you time and it's easier to, it's more intuitive to work on mm. it. But it depends also on what you do with your photography. Because if you work, um, for instance, for street photography, you don't need a Wacom tablet. It's even, I think it's even going to, uh, to work um, against you. Yeah. Because it's a different, uh, um, it's a different way of thinking because Another part of my photography, you don't know about it, and most people don't because I'm not posting anything street, but I shoot a lot of street, and uh, I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, there, you don't need to intervene so much in the processing. You can get away with less things. So there, you, you don't need so much a, a Wacom tablet. You may be working easier with a mouse. Uh, but other than this, if you if you want to do something extensive, it's useful. Mm. Or on tablet, it's very useful. It's in interesting what you say there, actually, about that. Um, no, I didn't know about your street photography apart from the motion blur, which I saw. Let's go to screen share because uh, um, okay, we've got quite a few uh, live viewers. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's go to uh, screen share, and um, you should be seeing your page up on the screen now yes I do that's great um, now at the moment I've got it on the on the print uh, print buying uh, page of your website um, let, let's go to this one which uh, which I've been talking about which is the motion mm -hmm. blur and then we'll, we'll move on to your architectural work and okay. specifically after we've well, after we've shown the photographs uh, Julia I'd love to talk about the printing aspect aside, when you actually fact go to to selling your work and um, how you go about getting your work printed, yeah. um, I'm hoping that each individual will open up separately. They may be yes, just a little does. bit bigger than the uh, bigger than the uh, the screen. Um, so uh, this this is I've got a love affair myself with uh, with motion blur and photography. And when I look at photographers like Dido Moriyama and and people of that nature. You know, they just, Do you just, know Alexei Titarenko? Um, no, I don't know that that name. Um, he's, but now he's, you've mentioned he's very it. good. I'll he have has to, a uh, series uh, with people, motion blur of people. They are going in. Uh, he's uh, he's Russian. No, it's, he's living in New York or anyway in the US, and he made a series many years ago. Uh, he was using film, uh, and you can see the people going into the a metro station. Of yeah. an old uh, looking uh, metro station and it's so hunting i mean this is this was the moment when i saw his work i think it was 2000 something in the beginning of 2000 uh i was i think this that was the moment that i start thinking about fine art and doing something else yeah. with photography other, other than documenting and uh it, he's some someone um You'll you'll like you surely like. Yeah, I'll 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 start looking him out. Thank you for that that tip. Let's uh just just click through a couple of images here. This this mm -hmm. one here, the, the birds in flight here. Um, this one tell me, is tell film. Me how the image came it's, about. it's a it's an image on film and it's scanned. Uh, right. It's shot. Yes, it is shot with um with an old Fujika uh, that I'm using sometimes when I work with film. And um, I scanned it afterwards. Uh, and this is, uh, I think it's a couple of, not even uh, one second or something, one or two seconds. It's uh, maybe even less. No, it's, I think it's even less. Mm -hmm. uh, this is shot in, uh, in Zurich, uh, in Switzerland, in a park. Um, okay. And uh, I, it was, I, I didn't know I would get this. It was, um, I mean, I was lucky that I, I managed to um, set this uh, shutter speed um, 
because I wasn't sure how much, how, how long I need to get these birds. They were flying around and at some point they uh, all uh, set and uh, I was expecting them to, to fly. It was a moment, the moment was set up. I mean, it was there and I was expecting, but I wasn't sure that this will, uh, will be the, the right shutter speed. I couldn't make a, um, a test because no. I would need to expect another one. But I was I was right. <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, I think that's that's the disadvantage of working with film. You can't have a little quick look at your uh, the back of your screen yeah. to check if you got no, it. No. I just love that image. I think it's a great opening image that you've uh, created there. And I'm going to just skip over that one because the guys are standing on the somehow. This one caught my eye. Where was this taken, Julia? This is taken in a, a very um, a fantastic building. It's uh, the Jewish Museum in um, in Berlin. Right. And this is taken, yes, in uh, 2012 when um, during a photo walk that we organized with uh, Joel Chinchiller and the two other photographers, um, Athena Curry and uh, York Jung, and we organized a photo walk. It was the first photo walk organized in Europe, a big photo walk. I think we had uh, around 100 people, I don't remember exactly. Wow. It was uh, uh, on the um, uh, model of um, the photo walks that were organized in the US, you know, yeah, with a lot of people. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a fantastic event. Uh, I mean, this was one of the, the events that created, uh, built the community on Google Plus because it was a, yeah. a, a photo walk that we um, promoted on Google Plus. People uh, knew about it there and um, People came from all over the world, not only from Europe. And it was really a, a great event with fantastic photographers that came and great relations that, uh, relationship that are still, I, I mean, I still have friends from there. That's and I still, uh, I'm still in contact with uh, people who came there. And this is inside the museum. You can't use a tripod there. Um, the museum is um, uh, designed by Daniel Libeskin, who is, who is one of my favorite architects. He is a uh, deconstructivist. Yeah. And we were shooting outside and then we went inside to see the museum. So I had to, I couldn't set up a tripod. And this is actually a, an image that is a blended image from, I think, five images. Because I was uh, just sitting against the wall. I was um, on um, supporting myself on the wall so I can take these yeah. photos and they are not, blur I mean, I wanted to blur the people, but not the rest, obviously. Yes. Yeah. So this is a handheld um image made for from five images that i um blended because i needed more people uh, mm -hmm. and it was just a group that was it happened that they were and it was another moment that i had to be very very quick and set up my camera very quick but quickly um sometimes you need to think very fast when you, this is um what you have to do in street photography <laughs> yeah you exactly. have to be very quick to to have to I, what I do when I, I shoot street is keep my camera somewhere somewhere at a, a setting that is covers a lot of things so I can I am able to um, to set it because I'm shooting manual always yeah so I need to set a lot of things <laughs> when I take a shot and it's easy when you do uh, a long exposure you have all the time in the world or when you yeah, use exactly, a tripod yeah. and you you shoot a landscape you shoot a big, a building that is not moving but when people are moving and you want to to keep a just a moment yeah it's uh you have to be quick you have to be quick yeah what is that on the floor there of this of this uh these are some um pieces of metal of quite thick metal um mm -hmm. rusted metal and the idea is that um this is a jewish museum so these are yeah. the victims somehow um, a oh, okay. symbol of the victims oh, but okay. it's I understand. It, Space is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's yeah. so deep, deeply. It gives you such a deep emotion. Yeah. And um, I thought that people walking on this and being like ghosts. Um, yes. It was exactly what I had in mind to to show about this uh, this yeah. space. Nice little bit of so, forward thinking there. And then, of course, you got people walking uh, down the street here mm -hmm. as uh, with uh, with the blur there, taken at night time as well. Yeah, this um, with a with a tripod. This was set yeah. up. I was this one. This here is a, the... this is again uh, handheld. This is a series yeah. that I did. Um, I wanted to make a, a sequence, and uh, if you go to the um, 
I have um, the, the print um, page. Yeah. You'll see that I have everything in a sequence, all these photos. There are seven photos of, uh, of this. Oh, OK. And it's, it's th thought like it was the um, um, how the life, this little girl is um, a subject, and how this life is. Yes. Um, this is the, the sequence. This is the idea. And um, it's called, um, how is this called? Like, um, Shadows of a Soul. That's, that's right, Shadows of the Soul. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, I just think these are great. And the interesting thing that I find about when you take photographs like this, especially if you're pointing your camera down to the ground, there's always one foot that is not moving. Yeah, that is exactly yeah, yes. I, I, I found it a couple of times with my images i thought that is amazing that, that the yeah. rest of the body is moving yet to see it here very clearly in this image that the one with the high heel and the one with the flat shoe there mm -hmm. okay they're not 100 sharp obviously because of the slow yeah. shutter speed you've used but it's almost still and the rest of the body is moving it's and quite this amazing gives, gives this Sorry. combination between motion yeah. and stillness it's somehow like in long exposure when you shoot you have the clouds or the water that has, are blurred and everything yeah. else is sharp so you have this contrast that's right yeah I have, a, I have an image after this series uh, i think it's after this series with two just two um uh, foot uh, feet this one and you can that's see right, that there. that's the one that i saw this morning yeah. when i was having a quick check of your work and, I've, and, the, and they were me straight away but walking there we are. against each yeah. other i thought yeah. it's uh, it's a, an interesting yeah. symbol. Yeah, that's right. Let's come out of that group. I, I, fantastic work. Absolutely love it. Um, let's go back to uh, to the uh, to the menu and, and pick another. Let's go to the architectural side because that is what I would term is is what you're better known for. And this is where we see work just and there's one road here that I know so well. Uh, yeah, this is in London. Uh, Riverside down at London, going to, uh, looking towards the Shard, which is at the end of the yeah. this uh, little. Which is the bit. other direction that people yeah. are shooting generally here. Yeah. We got as as you will know, you've been to London by the looks of things many times. That uh, we've got some very weird names for our our buildings. With, you know, the the building behind you, as you would look, this the, we call that the Turnip, which is with the Mayor's office. You've got the shard mm -hmm. at the end of it. For those that don't know, which is going straight down the centre of this line, this is a rill. We call this a rill in the, in London, which is a very very narrow running water down that uh, down that street. In the old days, of course, they would have had a rill to take all the waste down to the river, and that's where it came from. It's called a rill. Mm -hmm. But um, so it has a this history. Is, this is it has a history. Exactly. This this lane has yeah. a real history here. And the last time that I was there, it wasn't running. It was in winter, so you have to go oh, yeah, there. They, yeah, you have because to go there. I suppose they stop it in the winter, so it doesn't. Uh, I think they do. So it may have been just the fact that they were uh, sort of um, doing some work with the fountains at the at the top end there, with uh, which overlooks oh. the uh, uh, that area with the mayor's office. But this. Uh, 10 15 years ago probably a little bit long but definitely 15 years ago this wasn't here this was a, mm -hmm. quite a derelict area of london um and it's mm -hmm. built up into something where the amount of people now that go there for looking to do their architectural photography and looking for that abstract with all these buildings is uh is countless this is a great image yeah, there's uh, a Julia. spot here yeah. that is very photographed between these yeah. three buildings with um yeah like a triangles that come from the it. triangle, yes. yeah, it's a very good spot a very good spot and it's, you'll see these um see everyone sort of lining up and getting that image yes. yeah <laughs> where was this where was this one taken julia this is in uh, in houston in texas oh, right, this okay. is a fantastic building yeah it's uh philip johnson um designed it and it's pencil palace i was there with a friend he he took me there and um when i shot some other buildings in in houston also and um this is a it, it's not easy to shoot because it's uh, you you don't have um i mean the, the angles that you have are uh, specific you can be all even very close to the building or quite far away 
and yeah. this is very close and this was this is a, an opening between uh, the buildings there are two very high uh, tall buildings that have this very sharp very very small opening between them and mm -hmm. it's amazing that you can't have all these reflections from the buildings um, on the other side of the street which is this building um, on the left is also his uh, Philip Johnson's um, I think he designed it also, and you have all this play with, uh, with reflections and with plants. It's it's very, I mean, it's uh, it's crazy what's happening there. If you are um, at the, that uh, place and try to find um, find um, an order in all this, and what yeah. I tried it was to to find something that defines it and um, shows what I what I see, what I think about this and how I feel about this building. And this was by showing, making the um, connection between the sky and uh, the reflection of the sky um, with this um, sharp opening between the buildings and yeah, it's exactly. continuing on the other side. Interesting. Yeah, I like sure. this very much. It, yes. But it was a very difficult image to, uh, to shoot and to, I have, I think I have 15 um, takes of this so right. I can find the best angle and also to process because I had to to find a, an order uh, when you have a lot of elements in uh, mm. in a photo it's very difficult to you, you have to think about uh, prioritizing them yeah. and prioritizing them by first by composing and then by working with light and yeah. this can be difficult to find exactly that the, what, uh, what the relationship what time, between what time what time of the day was this photograph taken? It's a, a in the afternoon. It's uh, the afternoon, it's yeah. daylight. Yeah, it's not, and, uh, uh, and uh, was the photograph taken with a tripod? Yes, it's a long exposure. Yeah. It's it a is a long minutes. exposure. Okay. Uh, it's five minutes and, or something. Okay, right, fine. And um, wow, that's that's a long time. What about uh, the the camera gear that you've used for this uh, particular image? This one was shot with a, uh, I think it's uh, with a Nikon with the D seven thousand. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what what lens was and on the that lens? One? It's yeah. a ten tw to twenty four. It's uh, okay. a very good lens. Uh, yeah. So you're not, you're not worried lens. in this particular I image the way you, you've uh, composed it. You're not worried about uh, the angles and the uh, the way that the building's sloping away. There's no attempt in your uh, in your vision of this particular image to to get those the building upright and and to looking you know straight. Dare I use that term? No, I have that image also, but yeah. th that was not showing what I thought about yeah. this building. So I had to get closer and I had to go abstract to show because it's an yeah. abstract building. Yes, and it, is, it, yeah. it makes me feel like this. Yeah. Um, and I think many times uh, if you want to, to find the, the essence, the soul of a building, it, it's many times it's easier to do this if you go closer. And you yes. find a certain element and not necessarily show the entire building because yes. that element is it's maybe easier for you to connect with it and to express yourself with one element and not with the entire building plus no. you can create something that is different from what you see generally so yeah. it's easier to uh, stimulate the mind of, okay um, just Where just one that? other just one other question on the setup of your camera um, am i correct in assuming you would have had a, an nd filter on this as well yes it was uh, it, there were two filters it was a 10 star yep. filter and uh, six so i had 16 stops right well, um, so that that's how so, you got the five minute exposure during yeah, that, that this time is how day. you you managed to do this uh, long exposures yeah, exactly yeah so um, is that the um, uh, flat iron building this in new york this is no 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 this is in chicago in chicago it's a right, okay. Wrigley's building and in in the back of it it's the trump tower yes which is very yeah, imposing I it yeah i recognize yeah. it now but i wanted to focus on the Wrigley's building more on the um, traditional architecture yeah this is also in chicago this is a series that i shot uh, in chicago it's um, and it's with a tilt shift and i what i wanted here i wanted to use a tilt which is not very much used in architecture. In it, it's a little bit counterintuitive to to work with a tilt and with a blur in architecture when you want to. Yeah. The idea is to keep everything sharp. So I wanted to play with this, and this was a, again a very interesting series to work on because it's it, it was 
difficult to to work with it uh, technically and as uh, as far as vision to work with something that is not so um not so used the tilt yeah uh, i mean the blur in architecture you use the yeah, blur as yeah. bokeh in portraiture or something like this but again i wanted to blend things because mm -hmm. i like to combine um things i like to combine um also the technique that i'm using i've taken things from different kinds of photography for instance i'm using frequency separation masks <laughs> in architecture right. that are classical for for portraiture so i like to combine things and you can get very very interesting results when you when you start yeah. when you open your mind and and, and um, use things that you um you can take from different other um kinds of photography genres <clears throat> This is again in Chicago. This is a Prudential, uh, Prudential Plaza, uh -huh. uh, another very interesting building. In, uh, and all this series is, um, it has, the name is Fluid Time. And I try yeah. to, both with the long, the long exposure combined with the blur and yeah. the buildings being sharp in, but just very a very small area to, to make this combination of uh, like uh, combining two worlds together and um, working and thinking about uh, living in parallel worlds. This was the yeah. idea. Just one more image. Uh, this is uh, this is home for you. This is yes. uh, Just this the Acropolis is in, in Athens. No, it's yep. um, Poseidon um, Temple. It's somewhere right. close to yeah. uh, to Athens. It's again a very very interesting site, archaeological site, and it's uh, this building is um, is very well preserved, even if you have only a few columns. But the entire site is is very interesting, yeah. and it's one of my few uh, color photos from because for quite a few years I'm working with black and white mainly. Yeah, I was going to say actually, it's uh, it, I noticed obviously this one was in color, which and, and the majority of it's your just work to is, make is a little one. bit of contrast. Yeah. Yeah, to exactly. puzzle the viewer. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> because well, one, a friend, different. a friend of mine asked me, "Why don't you put this photo on your website?" And I said, "I don't know. I have only black and white. Why would I put <laughs> just one?" Why and he said, "Oh, it's yeah. a branding." <laughs> and yeah. I, I didn't think about it like this, but good idea. <laughs> right, so I'm I, just gonna just gonna go through very quickly with the uh, landscape images because this to me takes you right to the other side of your uh of, of your of your your photography where basically with the with the architecture and the and what we saw a little bit from the motion blur there was a lot of interest in it in a high high contrast work uh and darker and darker work and here obviously snowfield uh yeah. landscapes beautiful minimalistic reminds me very much of michael kenner's type work um, I don't know whether you're familiar, you must be familiar yeah, with Michael yeah, Kenner. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, his shots when he's uh, been to Hokkaido and uh, and other areas uh, in the, in Asia. Whereabouts uh, were these uh, set of images taken, uh, Julia? These are actually in Greece, which is not so easy to shoot snow in Greece. So I was, gonna say, I was, that's a real hunting, surprise. I was hunting these images for three years. Really? And they are not even close to my house. <laughs> so <laughs> there are some... Thing like 700 kilometers away wow but it's a place that I went um, quite um, often so I was looking at this um, at these trees and I was thinking how beautiful they would be, would be with the snow but I kept going there and I didn't have snow and once I I was lucky that it was snowing and I had uh, reached there after a few hours so there was enough snow and these images are taken when it's snowing so some of them i took a lot of uh, photos i also played with the um, um, international camera movement and because i have another image that i took um, some years ago i don't have it on my site website that i took um, from uh, this location with some um, movement again mm -hmm. um, so i was trying to i wasn't sure if i would work with uh, sharp images or with um, uh, blurred images so I had mm. I have both but then uh, I like more this so I was very lucky to have this now and you can see that in the background things are very um, like in fog and it's yeah, not exactly. fog it's actually it's, snow. It's, it's, it is snow, snow in there 
Yeah. Amazing. So you see the snow on the, on the trees. This is uh, something that you get only when it's snowing after one two hours. Well, I've, I've learned especially in Greece. I, did, I was going to say I didn't think it ever snowed in Greece. I've learned something today. And this is in the mountains. Okay, if you go to the mountains, you can yeah. also, also ski. This is uh, uh, next to uh, close to a uh, ski uh, slope. Ski resort. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely images. Yeah, this is called catharsis. The, the, yeah, the catharsis. Yeah, okay. And yeah. all. Um, all my series are actually stories that I have. You don't know it, <laughs> you don't know them, uh, but there are stories in each of my series. Uh, so I'm, I'm working um, on a on a plan, and it, always I, I take inspiration from my life. So it's somehow autobiographical, whatever you see I'm I'm that ready. I'm working. And this is what I try to do to ex to uh, transmit to convey my my experiences and what I see around me. Beautiful, beautiful yeah, work. Good, um... That's lovely. I'm going to come out of the screen share now. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing those images with us and uh, com commentating through with uh, how you've um, set the work up and, yeah, thanks to and everything else. Um, let's just briefly talk about the your camera gear. So is the Nikon uh, 7000 your, your regular camera that you use with the... Uh, with um, your... No, it was, uh, right. but now I'm, I'm uh, working with Canon. I ha still have the Nikon, but I'm mostly working with the uh, Canon 5D Mark III. Right. Uh, actually, I switched to Canon because um, the moment that I wanted to uh, use a full frame camera and I wanted to buy the um, D800, the Nikon, yes. it wasn't good for long exposure. It has a lot of noise. Yes. Then I, I wanted to work with the tilt shift lenses and the tilt shift lenses that Canon has are newer and they are easier to work with and mm -hmm. uh, from what they say, they are better than the Nikon. So that was the moment, even if I like Nikon, uh, anyway, I like both, it, they are just as good. So mm -hmm. I both a camera, a Canon camera, and from then on, I'm working with both, but um, mostly with the Canon. So the Nikon is mostly like a second camera, something like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. The Canon 5D Mark III is still going strong. I don't know how old yeah. that camera is now. I think it's probably I think it's near three, three four years, years yeah. Yeah. isn't it? And still, it's still, still good a good, camera. good, good workhorse, isn't it? Very much so. Let's talk about uh, your book um and your workshops now uh, julia how did the book come about the book was uh, something that i started um i wanted to make a handout for my workshop this was the idea so i started to put together some thoughts um but at some point these thoughts were becoming too many and i still had many thoughts and i wanted to cover a lot of things so at this moment, at a certain moment, I understood that what I want to do is not necessarily a handout, but a book to, to do something that has um, a structure, complete structure and covers mm -hmm. everything. And I started uh, to do this. And um, then I, because I wanted to cover as much as I want and to get, give as much information as I want, uh, I wanted to bring someone else in and um, to make this book even better. So I talked mm -hmm. to Joe because he's very good. He's, for me, he's the best in, in uh, this kind of uh, photography. He has um, very good ideas and we work together well because this is also Im important. So we started working together and the parts that um, he covered um, were things that I hadn't covered, for instance, long exposure. He has uh, write, written a lot of things about long, long exposure. I haven't mm -hmm. done it so much. I'm mostly on the most, uh, the more, um, let's say, theoretical part um, about vision, about composition, things like this. And um, so we worked on, on this book, I think, for about uh, two years, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the good thing is that when it came out, it was um, received very well, very enthusiastically. And still mm -hmm. people are, are reading it and we got uh, some great reviews, um, even from uh, very well-known photographers and they've said uh, fantastic things about the book and I thank them 
for this. So the book went very well and I'm very happy about it because it there was a lot of effort that we put in, yeah. into this book and a lot of knowledge and things that uh, weren't share, um, uh, shared before about uh, black and white photography. Yeah, I, I've, uh, there's a, uh, a particular site which you can go into which you can actually flick through and, and review the book. Uh, and it's very detailed from what I can see. It's something, it's on my Christmas list, so I hope someone's listening. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, a, it's a very, it's a very detailed book uh, as regards to how how you build these images and create these yeah, images. It's from, from 420 your something pages. So yeah, yeah, it's a uh, lot detailed. of. I got the other book. And it's which, not, uh, it's not made like this to be to see more because you know sometimes when you write a book you try to make it bigger. It's not. It's very full. I mean, it's uh, information on yeah. all the, the the entire um, uh, surface of the page and. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's, oh, it's, a, it's a full book. There's no doubt about that. Book, yeah. um, as I say, I hope someone's listening to this broadcast and uh, that, it, uh, that I get it. Um, so let's. How did the, how did the workshops come about? Because of this is this is something which a lot of photographers are doing now. They they start off yeah. in their career of of work, whether it's a, a portraiture, weddings, or or fine art photography, or or just street photography for argument's sake. And of course the workshop follows on because it is now becoming uh, a very important part of, of finance really of uh, uh, for a photographer. How did the workshop yeah, start? Actually, I you? didn't think about it like this. Uh, how the workshop started, uh, the workshops and the um, journey of the teaching that I'm doing, the mentoring courses that I'm doing started from a request. I was requ requested to do. Right. So this is how it started. Um, with the workshops, there were uh, there was a, a photographer that wanted here in Greece wanted to put up a, a group of people to do workshops, and we were thinking about doing them in uh, Greece, but in generally generally in different uh, parts of Greece. And I wanted to cover architecture. Uh, the uh, this um, formula didn't work in the end, so the other photographers didn't do it. Um, but because I liked the idea and it was something I always like to to share to what i know even if it's not in the form of workshops or but i always want to tell people what i know and um, i was always doing it in in everything so it was for me it was something very interesting to do to uh, start teaching what i know and i started to to do workshops in uh, in greece so it was mm -hmm. practically the, the first architecture work uh, workshop done in greece especially in fine art and black and white and um, it's this is all, all already I think four years that uh, I'm doing it, and it was received very well. Um, and I also did workshops um, in other uh, places. Uh, I yeah, also do private workshops. I've done in in a lot of uh, places in the world. In because this is US. this is what's happening now. As I say, I'm very fortunate to be able to sort of ask you to join me on this show at a, at a particularly busy time for you because. As you as you yeah. mentioned before the show, next week you're off to Rome, and and yeah. uh, workshops are now sort of developing for you all over Europe and 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 other other continents. Um, how how actually um, does the does the workshop um, is it on a seminar type basis or is it a sort of like it's, a small group and a workshop uh, with you demonstrating? Um, it's both theoretical and practical because you can separate this, and I want to cover everything because otherwise, because it's about uh, teaching and not about me wanting to get uh, a source of um, financing. It's not better as a source of finance, but it's not the idea. The idea no. is to to give something to people, to, to share something with them. So I'm covering both the th theoretical part, um, the shooting and the processing. So it's a, a complete uh, workshop. And um, I'm um, I'm in contact with my students from before. I send them different things uh, from even before they have um, material from me uh, afterwards. Uh, so it's not only you go there for a couple of days and then you disappear. It's and I I have a lot of um, friends from these workshops and they become friends between uh, between them. So it's um, it's more like an, an experience. Uh, this is how I see it. And, it. and it's almost an ongoing process by the sound of things. Yeah. You're keeping in touch with your students. Yeah, this and... is why I'm not doing so many um, group workshops. And um, because 
I want to, um, to be able to focus to make something really um, mm -hmm. worth it. And maybe this is why I'm uh, doing a lot of uh, private workshops, the, the workshop that I'm doing with a few people, just one, two, or three people. Mm -hmm. Because you have a, a connection, a, a more um, a deeper connection with them, and you can yeah. pass more things to them. And, um, but also the group workshops are interesting because you have, uh, you have a, a group of people that is interacting, ideas come, uh, they learn from each other. It's, uh, yeah. it's very interesting like this also. Yeah, this is something which, a, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with, uh, with the Arcanum, um, which yeah. is uh, basically uh, it's worldwide sort of people, uh, groups mm -hmm. of people getting together in, in cohorts. And, and there's no doubt about it. When, you, when you're talking in a group, you're learning from all sorts of different angles, yeah. not only from the master, from the, the teacher, questions, but you're, the people do, uh, exactly, make, from your peers as yeah. well. It's, it is I mean, I'm, I'm learning from them also. It's not only them yeah, learning yeah. from me. And okay, it's the inspiration that is, uh, is um, circulating yeah. between was it something you ever wanted to do a teaching or is it is, it, is this just something which has occurred and sort of just come along so to speak i always wanted to help people to give them what i know to to tell them mm -hmm. what i know and uh, i was doing this for for a river but i i hadn't thought about um teaching as um as my career of being becoming a teacher or mm -hmm. something like this but I like to share things, and workshops are a very good, good way to very do it. Very good basis to do also that. Also, my it? mentoring um, courses and yeah, yeah. So, so next next workshops, uh, work um, group workshop will be in New York, and I am very excited about this because yeah. I really love New York. Um, as it's good for any kind of photography, but for architecture, is. Mm. Have, just like Chicago, it's another uh, favorite. Yeah, uh, I, I think that probably this this sort of era that we're living in, um, uh, it, it, the, the way that I've seen London change so much so quickly over the last 10, 15 yes. years, um, is, is just truly amazing. The buildings which are going up, and yeah. well, even when you look at Shanghai, when you look at, uh, I've been to Berlin as well, seen that. Mm -hmm. I was in Frankfurt last year, and down at the financial end there where the Deutsche Bank building is, uh, is a fantastic place to be. And then, of course, you've got La Défense in Paris. Yes. You've got Canary Wharf in London. And, and, of course, not to mention New York and Chicago as well. You just you can't without, yeah. shoot too much in Canary Wharf. You have to get <laughs> it's quite amazing, stuff. isn't it's it? Not really, it's not so easy. You have to... no. Who would you say is your favorite architect at the moment? My favorite architect is, for a long time, um, Zaha Hadid. She's a female architect. Uh, she's the first female architect that um, won the Pritzker Prize for Architecture. That's right. Is, is, she, that, the lady, is she the lady that designed the um, the cycle arena at uh, the uh, London Olympics? Uh, no. Um, is it the cycle no, I don't think she, she designed something for uh, uh, in China. Now it's uh, a, a, a museum, an art museum that is uh, very right. on vogue. It's probably the wrong lady um, I'm thinking of. Is, it, is she the lady from, is it from Iran or from she's Iraq? From, yeah, she's from uh, Iraq. Yeah, it's she's Iraq, in yeah. London. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, the lady. But yeah, she's, I think, yeah, she's original. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe she's like she, the uh, she cycle did. drum. It's, it's possible. I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know yeah, all these all her buildings. She's and especially, he's very uh, prolific now. She wasn't, yeah. uh, whatever she was designing couldn't be built up to a point because I'm, I like her work from the moment yeah. that she was just going to a contest and making projects. But she couldn't um, build. She started to actually build, uh, I think, 10 years ago or something. Then when people had the means to do what she was yeah. she was creating. So this is very interesting. Yeah. I, I, I listened to her being interviewed after she'd been given that award. And she said that one of the most yeah. difficult industries for, for a woman to be involved with is, is architecture, that it's yeah. still not accepted that the women can yes. do the work as, as well as men. I, I experienced this as well. And photography you is did, not very you? far from this. Really? It's, um, we are still living in a man's world. <laughs> so <laughs> being That's able to do these yeah. things and is, in architecture also, I've done quite a few things. So I can say that I was uh, fortunate. But yeah. I know that uh, there are many other women that have, um, let's say, issues with being 
women. Yeah, in, in the, well, one of one of my very earlier shows. If you get a chance to watch it, uh, you're very kind to watch some of them. I interviewed a lady called High Money. Uh, mm -hmm. She's an Indian lady came over to our country when she was just 19 years of age, and yeah. she became a sports photographer, uh, dedicated to one of the football teams in London, and mm -hmm. the the stories that we went through in that particular show how difficult it was for her to break into photojournalism yeah. was truly well at some times to be quite honest with you from my aspect it was heart-wrenching the way she was treated it was absolutely amazing disgusting really but that's another story i think um, you should you shouldn't think about it you you and if you're positive and if you go yes. about what you want to do exactly right you will do it it's exactly some one way or the other um life will work for you in some way exactly right and that is exactly what hi did she she stuck at it and she she got some very high respect at the end of the day it was uh, worthwhile so we come to that point of the show where some of my guests don't really like this point where they where i ask them who is your favorite uh, photographer <laughs> at this time yes i've seen some of your shows and they, <laughs> they, they never want to answer <laughs> yeah no i i will answer because i have uh, if i can talk about more than i can talk about more than one but the one that yes. um is my all-time favorite is uh, henri cartier bresson so he is yes. for me for my style is um the god of photography he had a fantastic eye he mm -hmm. was able to work with geometry to see things to i mean all his photos are um everything that's there has to be there and exactly in the, the spot that he uh, put it mm -hmm. um strangely enough most of my um, favorite photographers are uh, street photographers <laughs> yes <laughs> another one is uh, alex Titarenko that i told you about he's yes. not very he is quite well known but not he's not so well known but go check him out and see the um, the series he done in St. Petersburg. Also, a uh, photographer that I discovered, I knew him, but I wasn't aware so much about um, him, is Fan Ho. I don't know if you know him. No. He's a Chinese photographer. Uh, he's quite well known. He's, um, he's living in, uh, in the US. It's F-E-A-N-H-O. Yes, I think name. I have heard of him actually, Van Ho. His, yeah, or Van Ho, I don't Not know, know how, how to, to pronounce mind, it. The name, yeah. But he also has fantastic frames, the way he sees things, the way he uh -huh. puts everything, uh, beautiful uh, uh, compositions and uh, use of light, the use of light that he has is, is uh, really uh -huh. beautiful. And um, so, this is my new discovery <laughs> yes uh, at this moment there are quite a few other photographers and um there are photographers also from the people that i know and i'm um, seeing i mean not uh, icons of photography that i like the, their work very yeah. much for instance my uh, co-author of the book george chinchillar is someone that i uh, like very much how he um what he does he has uh, Generally, I like people that can show more than just photography, that can go beyond this and can transmit me something more um, as um, when I, when I, where I see vision, when I see yeah. something that came from not, from not only trying to record something, but trying to, to tell something that come from, came from themselves. Yeah. And Joel is one of the people that uh, inspired me a lot is his work um that would be my next question actually to you um which is a, is a coupled question who's been your inspiration uh in your work um inspiration you mean in uh it's someone it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be a photographer it's someone that's been there's been a sort of that's inspired you that has helped you that has guided you has probably given you some uh, sort of an, an indication of the direction in, in life that you should take oh i i didn't think about this um so much um i mean now in the late years uh i could say that joe is the person that i'm talking to and we exchange ideas and i yeah. got a lot of things from him um and i'm inspired by um by his work and by other people's work but i'm not sure that this um probably in in, in the subconscious it, this works somehow 
Um, but I, I can say I, what I'm trying to do is to um, not be uh, so much um, influenced by what other people do. Yes. Uh, and try to, to, to do things. I, I do things that uh, I see other people do, but I'm, I, there are, these are not the things that um, show my, my true self. So I'm trying to um, somehow ignore as much as I can what other people do so I can do what I, what I feel. To try so to keep you on mind. my on my uh, way, but of course, seeing things uh, gives you ideas, and this yeah. is a very good thing. And uh, maybe you start with something that you see, and then you this evolves in something else um, afterwards. It's, in, it's a very interesting point you make, actually, because when I speak to some uh, photography friends, they all say, "Well, no, I don't buy photography books because I don't want to appear as though I'm copying that style." And really, no, to I like agree. to see. I like to see, but I try exactly, not yeah. to uh, because if you uh, are, are conscious and if you um, are aware of this, that you, if you like something, you be, will be would be um, possible. It would be possible for you to do the same. If you are yeah. aware of this, you know where to. Um, you, you you know how to learn from it, how to get ideas from it, but not do the same. Uh, yeah. Do something that is. Um, specific to you and this is what yeah, i try i mean i'm we, inspired we, by by, um, by the work that i see from other people yeah. uh, by ideas um, they give me ideas but i try after this to go further to mm -hmm. to, to show what i have in me and this is why I'm, I'm saying that i'm not necessarily doing photography but i'm doing a visionography it's something that is based on on my vision and on my own experiences and yeah. i'm creating uh, not necessarily on the subject or or on something that is outside me it mm -hmm. comes it um, starts with uh, with um, what i have inside me yeah. but i i do um i do take things a lot of things from what i see around me it's and i'm happy that there are so many things that you yeah, can see and I, I think i think it's inevitable that you're going to see something and, and it's going to affect you as regards to how you do your work but it, it, i think the point you're trying to make is we, we have a little saying in in the uk you put a little twist on it yourself your own specific yeah. style comes into that work yeah. which you may have seen an idea it could be a painting a monet painting it could be by matisse or or For instance, Van, yes. which, good, this, very good point a painter that has uh, um i'm made me think about again about motion blur is uh, francis bacon i think you know yes. him yes with these yeah. contorted um, um bodies and mm. uh, i thought about this i was i liked uh, this painter very much i was uh, trying to paint on my wall when i was a teenager <laughs> his paintings <Yeah. laughs> my my wall at home my mother was crazy yeah. <laughs> what yeah. are you doing here what is this <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yes, you, you, you get things uh, in, uh, in your life that can come afterwards after many years and, um, and show in, in something that you do. Yeah. But um, yes, I think, um, uh, and uh, one thing that uh, I'm thinking of, uh, since you mentioned uh, Joel, is that probably if I um, wasn't um, in contact with him and, and talking about things with him, Probably I wouldn't have gotten so much into uh, photography. I would, um, I mean, openly, publicly. Yeah. I would have kept it as I, it was before. But having someone um, to talk to, and um, uh, it's different. It, it, uh, it makes you be more interested, and even your ideas evolve. It is very uh, important not to be alone in what you do, and having yeah. people to to discuss about it and to um, to make your ideas evolve and and um, become something uh, something new mm -hmm. and um, this communication you, because what we want is to communicate in art exactly this is right. and if you have someone to communicate communicate to and not only the public generally mm. because the public is a um, a voice that sometimes doesn't have um, a certain idea is just a general idea yeah that's true but julia i've got a looking at the time here we're getting uh, very close to closing up i just want to say thank you so much for joining me and uh discussing through with too. the way that uh 
you go about your photography and and uh, the way you've developed into into this uh, into this style. It's been so interesting to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. Thank you very uh, much for inviting me. It was uh, it no was great being here. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to say to my uh, viewers, we've had uh, quite a number of viewers, which has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much for joining us live. Um, Julia doesn't know this, but uh, well, she probably does because she's watched a couple of my shows. But at the end of my show, I always say to my, my guests and my viewers, if you're going out shooting this weekend, leave your camera bag at home. All I the agree. best. To you. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. <laughs>